All right, let's check this. Let's look at some of the reasoning that some of your classmates had before we move into another pattern. There were two main directions that people went with their reasoning, coming up with rules for this formula. One of the directions that people went was, let me look at what happens side to side. Let me look at what happens top to bottom. And we noticed pretty quickly that the change, there's a change of two from left to right, and there's a change of two from top to bottom, okay? Each time, I had some people referring to one of them as the y-axis and the x-axis. And if I want to move from one figure to the next, simply, I need to increase my side length by two. Three plus two is five, and I need to increase my height by two. Two plus two is four, okay? And each time, 5 plus 2 more is 7, 4 plus 2 more is 6. You're able to continue the pattern that way. There's another strategy that some other people used, and that strategy looked like this. The rule, I thought, was add 8 to, per to the previous perimeter, or the formula you can come with is add 8. rule I can find is add 8. This person just kind of makes a chart, and I like this, the thoroughness of it. And this, this person, I like this as well. This is nice and efficient. They just wrote their plus eights, right? They wrote their totals and their plus eights. So that is that is looking at a big picture, not looking at the squares as individuals, not looking at length and width. I'm just looking at the totals. Six here, 14 here, 22 here, 30 here. And I found a pattern. Each time to get from one number to the next, I'm adding eight. All right, this kind of pattern, and the other one, where I said I'll add two each time, sets of two each time, these are called recursive. If I have one answer, then I can use a rule to get to the next answer. Okay? That's a recursive rule. They are useful when we're dealing with small sets of things. If I asked you what's the, how many red squares are in the 20th figure, you can find that. It'll take you a little while, but you'll get to the answer. Just keep doing the same thing over and over again. A few people took the ideas of add two to each side or add eight each time and went farther and came up with what I will call direct formulas. These formulas are the formulas that, if you can come up with it, you want to. This one, right here, says, adding random numbers to an equation in my head, I found out that if I multiply 8 by the number of the figure x and subtract the number 2, you get the amount of red squares. Check this. Alright, basically what they're saying is, figure number 1, I did 8 times 1, that's the figure number, and I subtract 2. I find out that equals 6, which is the answer here. And figure number 2, I can do 8 times 2, the figure number, subtract 2 again, and I get 14, which happens to be the number of squares here. And there's supposed to be 22 squares here, and just so happens that 8 times 3, my figure number, minus 2, gives me 22. So, this is a, this is a beautiful thing. This is called a direct formula. Now, I don't know that this person understands why their formula is working. They found it. They were messing with numbers in their head. They found it. Okay, this is connected to the idea that I'm adding 8 each time. Right? Remember, repeated addition is multiplication. So some people found I add 8 to get from 1 figure to the next, and if I keep adding eights, then I'm going to, that, that's the same as multiplying some number of times, times eight. Why is this kind of formula more useful, more powerful than a recursive formula? This is why. If I ask you, how many red squares are there in the 250th figure? With a recursive formula, add two to each side, 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 you have a lot of work to do. Whereas if you can come up with a direct formula, figure number times 8 minus 2, I, I, I've got my answer already. It's one, 
is 1998. There are 1,998 red squares in the 250th figure, right? 250 times 8 minus 2. Now, let me look at let me look at some of the other because so this particular direct formula probably is the most efficient formula that we would come up with. And next week I'm probably going to show you how to come up with it. But let's look at the other one that some people came up with because while they might not be as efficient, I think it, they're clearer. It's clearer what the connection is to the rectangles. Two people these formulas are very similar. One of them is using the letter F to represent figure number. One of them is using the letter X to represent the figure number. One of them is using the letter R to represent red squares. The other person is using the letter P to represent perimeter. I like this because this is very representative of you get to choose whatever letters you want when you're making up formulas. This person goes with X and P. That person goes with F and R. As long as you tell me what it is that you're doing, I can follow along. Let's start with this one, though, because they've got their width and their length and a lot of things defined. They're saying that every time, and, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to think of this length as, as height, but every time I look at a figure, my height is two times the figure number, and my width is one more than that. For figure one, my height is two times one. And my width is one more than that. When I look at figure four, my height is two, four, six, eight, two times the figure number. And my width is one more than that, two, four, six, eight, nine. Okay, so they notice this. This is the important piece in being able to make a direct formula is you have to connect the figure number to totals. You have to connect the figure number to totals, this thing here. They went on to say, I'm going to add top, bottom, left, right. I'm going to have two of these and two of these. And that'll be all my red squares. Okay, that's how they came up with the formula. Now, the formula is wrong. All right, the formula has an error in it, but I love... I love the fact that they got this far with their reasoning. What's the error in the formula? Maybe you already see it. They are counting some of the squares twice, right? When they count five squares along the top and five squares along the bottom, four squares along the left, four squares along the right, they're counting their corners twice. So to fix the formula, they're going to need to subtract those four corners out. Every time, they're going to have to subtract the four corners out. And then the formula would be fixed. Check this out. The second person that used that same basic idea, they've got this little minus four down there. Now, I don't know if they realized that they were subtracting four corners out because they were being double counted by this, this perimeter formula, but they noticed Maybe similarly to this person up here, they notice, hey, I always have to subtract four for some reason. Okay? So, very much, very much like to all this reasoning and other people that got close to that, direct formulas. Today, you're going to get another pattern that looks a little different from this, grows similarly, and I'm going to ask some of the same kind of questions. What I want you to try to do is... See if you can use some of the reasoning that you saw in this video. And, and very much if you can try to. All right? You might only be able to come up with a recursive formula. And if that's all you can come up with, that's fine. But if you are able to come up with a direct formula, there's an extra bonus question for you there to, to, to come up with the hundredth, I think, pattern. I don't want you to try to come up with a hundredth pattern if you don't find a direct formula because it's going to take you forever without a direct formula. Next week, we'll talk about a more rigorous way to get a direct formula for this kind of pattern. But I'm going to let you struggle for one more week. Now, shout out to all my people who uh, think this is useless nonsense. There are people that use this kind of reasoning and get paid a good deal for it every day. Think about this. What if these red squares weren't red squares? 
What if these red squares were forest fire? Started here in this area after one hour. This is how far it spread. Two hours. This is how far it spread. How long is it going to take for the fire to reach a city 20 miles away? How long is it going to take for the fire to reach a, a city 50 miles away? Who do we need to evacuate? Who takes priority? Right? This thing is growing at a certain pace. We've got helicopters up there mapping out the speed that it's traveling. And we, and we evacuate and send firefighters based on this spread. Or what if it was an oil spill? Same kind of thing. Or maybe this is more everyday weather patterns. Okay, They might not be spreading out in all four directions, but you've got a certain storm headed this direction at this pace how does the how does the, how do the weather people know when it's going to rain when is the snowstorm going to hit do they always get it right no they don't always get it right but but they're using math formulas that are very similar okay a little more complicated which is why they don't always get it right but very similar to the idea of we see this pattern emerging now let's calculate out into the future where is it headed? This is more connected to real life mathematics that people get paid for than you might first anticipate when you're just looking at boxes and random puzzle like questions Mr. Thomas asks. All right, so are all of you going to use this kind of math when you grow up? No, no, but some people do.